Today, a very special episode. Stories of gear made for the outdoors, brass root style, and built in the garage. The special characters who make our favorite gear come to life. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this. Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind-the-scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the outdoors. Be warned, if you ever enter this building, you might just get stung. Once you get bit by the boat bog here, you're hooked. Kevin Fitzke got zapped long ago. The boat stuff was just always an interest of mine. I definitely eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff, you know. In a way above average wood shop, Kevin slowly takes months, years, even decades off of old boats, one small scrape at a time. Lots of, lots of old varnish here. His work really quite singular, all about sharing stories. It's been in Italy the whole, its whole life, so out on the salt water. In this case, the tale of an old wood boat well-traveled. This is a 1960 Riva, and the model name is Florida. It's got kind of a neat little sunbed that folds out in the back here. There's a three-person bench seat up front. Being all an original woodwork on it, it obviously has seen its better days, so we're gonna redo all the decks and the, the sides and the bottom. That's what Kevin does. He restores some of the fanciest weathered boats around. We'll be getting the original upholstery from Riva to make sure it's, it's done correctly and everything, so this will be as original looking as possible. A nine month project, the work of Kevin's old soul. I love the history of wood boats, so I try to spend a lot of my time that I'm not in the shop building stuff, researching it. <laughs> It's neat to be able to have the opportunities like this to kind of fix these old things up and make it so other people can enjoy it and see what they used to look like back, you know, from the factory or back in the day. Fact is, restoring old boats wasn't quite enough. So Kevin paddled up a new creek, you could say. You know, a lot of it is just kind of in awe. I would say most people would say it's way better in person just because you can see the character behind it. You can really see the grain of the wood and the glossiness of that varnish on there. That's where I would say my ultimate passion is that is the wooden boat building and restoration stuff. And the paddle boards are just a really fun excuse to keep doing that. A means to an end which culminates here on quiet water. It's a, just a hot rod of a boat. It's super fun to drive around. It's incredibly smooth on the water. This morning, this ride, proof that boat building stuff can sting. This particular plans that my boat is based off of was printed in the February issue of 1935's Motorboat Magazine. And so it gives you kind of an overview. This is the original plans for bug bite. Yes, Kevin built the boat from scratch, literally from first board and first stainless steel screw. The name, well, you probably already figured that part out. You know, they all have a personality to them. They have, they have that character about them. I think you can really just see the, the physical soul between a wood boat compared to, you know, maybe a, a fiberglass or aluminum boat. And in the process, Kevin protects the stories. That's just what makes it that cool factor. They just, they sound cool. There's 
they ride completely different. It's just kind of that experience you have is just, you, you can't get that with anything else. When we get back, old farm equipment sparks an artistic side for a crafty Minnesota farmer. There we go. We're getting there. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Warner's Dock, Aquarius Home Services, Spire Credit Union, Ice Castle Fish House and RV, and by Keystone Light. Keystone Light, always smooth. Celebrate responsibly. When winter's icy grip freezes Chris Swidzinski's farming operation, business heats up in his backyard workshop. No, this is not a company, it's just me. So, me and whatever's going on in my head, so. <laughs> That's a welder's thing. Chris creates one-of-a-kind art out of recycled steel. Gotta be cool. Cool for school. We call it Swede Steelworks. A lot of the pieces I sell will be installation included. So this is actually going to be the skull part. This is, of course, an old wrench. Today's project uses pieces of farm equipment built in the late 1800s. Yeah, it's way over 100, so 130, 140 years old maybe. I mean, just look at the beauty in that little piece. I like to take old and new things and create things that no one ever thought of. Obviously, I'm a hunter. I love old guns. If it's an old parts gun, I want to be able to pull it in. Yeah, I kind of like that. This is uh, like a front plate of uh, like an old wood stove. So we got a lot of old gears, old fighting from an auger. We got parts and pieces from a couple old pistols and a couple parts and pieces from an old wood stove. And we're gonna bring it all together and we're gonna build a moose that someone might put on their wall someday. Just using that kind of as a, as a model, the distances and using it as kind of as a figure of scale. This is the front of the piece, and this would be the back of the piece. And so the, the main, kind of the epicenter of the piece will be the antler set. These I got from a, a guy that's kind of an antique dealer. Go to a lot of auctions, scrap yards, to really find the parts and pieces needed to kind of feed the beast, as they say. And the eyeball itself, these are ball bearings out of the big wind turbines that you see. inspiration combining metal with the natural world. You know, so much of nature is symmetry. I went to college for welding. My goal was to just be an industrial welder, so I worked on oil rigs. On the side, he began welding gifts for family and friends. They told him to make more. Would you please go out and try to sell this stuff, because I think people would buy it. And you know, like, ah, yeah, whatever. Turns out, they were right. And then 10 years ago, I finally said, you know what, I'm gonna give it a shot. So this is just kind of our Hidden Hill Gallery, because we call our farm site up here Hidden Hill. This is probably kind of my, my most sought after work. My biggest seller would be trees. So, you know, the, building the trunks and the branches, and, and that's really been a three-dimensional sculpture. By adding the, the tree and the roots, it really completes the piece that a tree is not just what you see, it's what you don't see. On this farm, you'll see trees, but you won't see two art pieces that look alike. I mean, life is a palette, and so whether it's hunting or fishing or, or being outdoors or welding or manufacturing, I think we're getting there. I'm gonna plasma cut a little bit off on this, I think. I kinda dig that. That's looking sharp. We got a soup ladle, and that's going to hopefully recreate a little bit of that bottom of the jaw. There we go. We're getting there. I'm going to polish these up a little bit. You know, you're taking something old that was discarded and turning it into something new that's really cool, and uh, that's our goal. 
what I really like is at first glance you see it, then at second glance you see more and more and more. Inside this small country workshop, a metal masterpiece comes to life. I get to do it and I, I get to make a living doing it and it's fun. Yet another productive winter day on the Swede family farm. When we get back, chopping down trees isn't just a hobby for getting firewood. One Minnesota family turns logs into festive holiday decorations. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Thorough Good Boots, Alex Pro Firearms, Casey's, Guy Metals, and by Russ Davis Wholesale. On a cold, gray Minnesota winter day, you'd find most people huddling indoors. Not the hells. Which way is she going? They're out in the woods. Sawing? Gathering. Want me to grab that and take it for you the rest of the way? I think I got it. <laughs> and piling as many birch trees as they can onto their trailer. These guys are messing around. Oh no, it's get it done time. Colleen Held views lumber differently than most. So those right here are legs for deers with the white. To her? So right here is a nice pair of antlers. These rugged forests are a place for inspiration. Right there, there's reindeer all day long. It's the hunt, yes. The hunt of looking for, you know, the, the neat birch trees. Yeah, we are scavengers. I, you know, not that I'm cheap, but I, I see something in it. You know, I can make something out of it. They work until their trailer is piled high with birch. They load up, tighten down, and hit the road. This is a small load compared to what we normally have. This is our home. We live here, we run our business here. Um, you are in Corcoran, Minnesota. You're at our barn where we make all our wood product. And we have a little uh, gift shop inside as well. The Held family modifies those chopped trees and one by one turns them into this. They make deer, snowmen, and all sorts of fun wooden creations. A lot of people walk in and just, we have a good friend that he goes, it's, I feel good every time I walk in your barn. I wanna just hang out here. Colleen and Mark's three sons help work the shop to keep up with demand. If they're short, they're next. If they're longer, they're legs. And they have this down to a science. I can tell just about, you know, that's a snowman, that's a medium leg, that's a large leg. So we each all have our own departments and everything, so. It goes quick with enough people. This is mainly my department, snowman building and like snowman. My brother's department is deer. My littlest brother, his department is the laser engraving and the laser cutout signs, you know. Everybody's got their job and everybody knows what to do. It sort of feels like Santa's workshop. But these guys work a little faster than else. These guys really fly when they get moving, huh? Yeah, they do. <laughs> we sell uh, probably three to 4,000 deer a year. <laughs> so we have to bring a lot of birch back to uh, do all that. And no part of the tree goes to waste. Well, we like to recycle, not even a crumb. Even the sawdust, we mulch the trees in with it. <laughs> out making the, the birch deer and snowmen and we kind of just been stuck in the Christmas theme. As jolly as Santa is, operating his workshop is not for the faint-hearted. 
it's a lot of physical work. It's cut it down, drag it to the truck, load it. When we get home, we unload it, and then we process it. It's, it's a lot of hands-on. But that's why it works for the Held family. Just being out in Mother Nature's yard and being outside, that's who we are. Still ahead, a small town offers Minnesota big winter fun. The idea of kids who dream of skating all over town. Kids from the river that way and from the river that way, they'll meet here and they'll get a game going. It's been just a beautiful thing for our community. My daughter says, let's see if we can plow from the neighbors to our rinks. So the next day we decided to give it a try and it went well. Hey there, I'm Bill Shirk, the man about the woods. And I'm Alexa Score. If you're a fan of Made for the Outdoors and want to know more about the show, be sure to like us on Facebook. And follow us on Instagram for cool behind the scenes looks at what we're working on. And don't forget, if you've got a show idea, be sure to drop us a note. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Casey's, Aquarius Home Services, Ice Castle Fish House and RV. Christmas might be a holiday of gifts, but Old Man Winter long ago gave this town so much more. Hockey's life up here. I mean, we're Hockey Town USA for a reason. A Canadian border borough of 1,800 people, where parents start them young. And locals greet strangers like this. Mike Flick, class of 1987, Section 8 champ. It's just hockey, hockey, man. Look around. When I grew up playing hockey, my son played hockey here. Or that's all people talk about in the wintertime. So when COVID shut the doors to War Road's indoor rinks, kids came up with a predictable plan. See, everyone skates on homemade rinks alongside Warroads River. Kids from the river that way and from the river that way, they'll meet here and they'll get a game going. It's been just a beautiful thing for our community. If you live here, you play hockey just to have fun, skate. High schooler Tori Kennedy had an idea to up the fun factor. Better let her dad explain. My daughter says, let's see if we can plow from the neighbors to our rinks. So the next day we decided to give it a try and it went well. Sure did. Tori's trail became Warroad's trail a river rink system stretching two and a half miles across town. It's been amazing for just people getting outside. The cutting of the skates on the outdoor ice is completely different than anywhere else. Frank Crane traded daily walking shoes for old skates. They put the trail right by my house and just walked on my dock, put my skates on and go for a skate. I haven't skated for probably 30 years, I don't know. It's been a long time. First time, a little scary, I was a little wobbly. The sudden magic of a new winter legacy. I'm a terrible, terrible skater. Strangers can't stay away. Yep, St. Paul. I talk to people on the trail once in a while, people from the cities, people from Grand Forks, Red River Valley, over that direction. People coming to walk dogs, pull sleds, push baby strollers, cross country ski, snowshoe, walk the trail. I mean, you name it. There's a guy here last week, he was on speed skates. He was living in New York State for the last 14 years. Locals rallied around the river too. Waking up bright and early to go set fireplaces. Kids keep wood stocked. Set up some fire pits on the banks and stuff for all the skaters and dads do the dirty work of cleaning ice. The Riverbend Maintenance Fund does a concession stand. 
We have snacks on a bonfire. Look at that beautiful hot dog there. I'm gonna go attempt to make my 13 year old happy. Wish me luck. Everything's free will donations. And that might truly be War Road's best kept secret. People here share happily, a gesture best expressed by the old garbage can. We have a bucket of sticks and that's kind of iconic. So when people come down, they're like, oh my gosh, look at the hockey sticks. And these ones are probably like $10 hockey sticks, but they've been around forever. Free to anyone who might take time to stop and just go for a skate. A river of dreams come true. Minnesota's newest frozen treat. A gift given to all of us from a hockey town where even the frostbite comes free.